Well, my raised herb and veggie beds are all turned over and ready for their next seasonal planting. Now they're great functional little beds, but I've decided I want something a little bit different. Something where if I want a potter, I don't have to get down quite so close to the ground. So I've come up with a plan for a simple raised bed with some seating around it. And the best thing of all is that you can put this thing wherever you want. It doesn't need any footings or foundations. You don't have to dig it into the ground. You just need some level ground, assemble it, fill it with soil and you're off. On its widest side, this bed will be 1400 millimetres, 1.4 metres wide and 600 millimetres high. Here's what you'll need to build one the same. Start by cutting all sleepers into 1200 millimetre, 1.2 metre lengths. Then cut four of these 1.2 metre sections in half to make eight 600 millimetre lengths for the corner pieces. Take two of the 600 millimetre sections, align their edges and ends and butt join them using 100 millimetre screws. One screw in the middle and one towards each end. Repeat to make four corners. Pop your first corner in place. When you look down at your corner, you'll see that you have a long and a short side. One is 200 millimetres, the other is 150 millimetres internally. Position a 1.2 metre length of sleeper flush in the corner flat against the short side. Lightly clamp then adjust to get it aligned with the bottom edge of the corner block before joining with two 100 millimetre screws. Position and clamp a corner block on the opposite end ensuring it is the short side that is flush with the sleeper. Secure this with 100 millimetre screws and then repeat the process to create the other end. Stand both ends up, position a 1.2 metre length against the long side of the corner block, align with the bottom and screw in place with one 100 millimetre screw. Use your square to check it is all correctly aligned and then secure with the second screw. Repeat for the far end and then for the other side. Use the short level to check sides and ends are level, adjusting if needed. Check inside your corners to make sure all are square. You should find that the corner blocks will help to naturally keep the structure square and rigid. Now you can add the rest of the boards in the same sequence. Short sides followed by the long side. As I mentioned before, this bed's going to have seating built into it. Now the best time to be doing that is now while you still have full access to the inside for putting screws through to support that seating. You could put seats all the way around if you wanted to, but I'm just going to put mine on these two faces. Measure the distance of the face between the corner blocks where you plan to add seats. From a 1200mm sleeper length, cut two pieces to size for each seat. From the 90 by 45 mm timber, cut two 350mm lengths per seat. Measure and mark at halfway up the end, 45mm, and then mark for a 45 and saw off. These will become your seat rails. Take a cut sleeper board and mark a line 50mm in from each end. Position a seat rail on the inside of the marked line with the square end flush with the back edge of the seat board. Clamp in place, roll it over and secure with two 100mm screws. Position and clamp the second seat board and screw this to the rail. Repeat for the opposite end and then to make your second seat. Measure between seat rails and cut 90 by 45 to suit as the seat mounting rails. Mark the centre of the seat location at the desired height, seats normally around 400 to 450 high, and mark the centre of the seat mounting rail. Align the centre mark on the seat mounting rail with the centre mark on the side of the bed, using the edge of the bed sleepers to set the level. Then screw the rail to the bed face with 100mm screws. Add at least three screws from the outside and the same from inside the bed. Now to finish our bench seats. On a 1200mm sleeper, use your square at 45 degrees and mark a continuous zigzag to create four right angled triangles for use as seat supports. Once marked, saw along the lines. Position one of these cut triangles at the rear of the assembled bench seat on the outside of the rail flush with the back and secure to the rail with two 100mm screws. Repeat for all sides. The bench seats are now complete. Slide your bench seat into place, it should be a snug fit. Then secure from underneath through the angle supports to the corner posts with 150mm screws at top and bottom. From the inside of the bed use at least three 150mm screws to secure through the seat panels. 
Inside the bed, measure the length of the short sides and cut two 90 by 45 pieces for support rails. Position their top edge 350 millimeters down from the top edge of the bed. Use at least five 100 millimeter screws to fix these rails off to the wall of the bed. Add at least another three screws through from the outside. Rest your 1200 millimeter level on the rails. It should fit perfectly and mark the center. You don't need to measure, just use the levels vial as the center. Cut a sleeper to the same length as the side rails. Position its top level with the side rails aligned with the center marks and secure in place from the outside with 150 millimeter screws. In the center of the sleeper, position a sleeper off cut as a leg resting on the ground and screw to the center sleeper with 100 millimeter screws. You can now add the 1.2 meter boards for the base of your bed. Start at one end and once they're all in place, space them evenly apart before screwing down with 75 millimeter screws. For each board, add two screws at each end and one to the center sleeper support. Cut a piece of drainage or filter fabric to size so it can lap up the walls a little and then staple in place. Start adding soil and when you're around three quarters full, add a couple of bags of well composted manure or activated compost. To help kickstart that essential biological activity in your new soil. Add the rest of the soil to bring it to full and level it off. And are you wondering how you estimate the right amount of soil for your new bed? It's actually some pretty simple maths. Calculate the volume of your bed. Length by width by depth. The figure you get will be in cubic metres. There are 1,000 litres in one cubic metre. So the result of 0.396 of a cubic metre is 396 litres. Many bagged garden materials are sold not by weight, but by volume in litres. For this project, I needed around 400 litres of bagged product. Always water a new bed well before you plant into it. And while this water soaks in, I'm going to add a finishing touch to this project. Now, it's completely optional extra, and I'm just doing it because I happen to have some timber left over from another project, so I thought I'd put it to use. I'm using leftover 90mm treated pine decking to dress my seats up. Measure cut and nail off boards for the edges of the seat, then pieces for the top with around a 30mm overhang on each side. And that's it, seat's nicely finished. And now it's time for my favourite part, planting. A dwarf pomegranate in the centre, I'm using a tape measure to make sure it's properly centred. A couple of pineapples in the back corners, then a row of compact sunflowers along the front. These are annuals, so I'll swap them out for seasonal plantings and colour every few months. Water the plants thoroughly and then add a good layer of mulch. I'm using finely chafted sugarcane mulch. Then water the whole thing well and your bed is finished.